Ooh, we're fishing already. One of my favorite things about fishing in the Northeast is that just when you think you figured it all out, everything changes. As water temperatures continue to rise, it seems like we're seeing more and more southern visitors. The northern kingfish is a great example of this. 20 years ago, these fish were unheard of in Cape Cod waters. Now you can reasonably expect to catch enough of them to make a solid fish fry. All right, so right now it is, ooh, we're fishing already. It didn't take long. Um, right now it's mid-September, and this is one of my favorite times to fish around here. All the tourists are gone. The water is the warmest that it's gonna be in the course of the season. And we get a lot of kind of unusual southern visitors this time of year. And what we have here is actually what I'm looking for. This is a northern kingfish. You know, they don't get a whole lot bigger than this, but what they lack in size, they make up for with their, their taste. It's a, a real nice, mild, white flesh fish, not unsimilar to like a black sea bass. This is probably the fifth or sixth year we've been seeing good amounts of these fish in our local waters here in Cape Cod. Back 20 years ago when I started fishing here, these things were pretty much unheard of. Now we can go out and realistically expect to target northern kingfish here which I think is pretty cool. That didn't take very long at all. I think that bait was sitting there for about two seconds before it hit. We're gonna cut up some bait. This is some long fin squid that we caught this spring. And this stuff is great for bait. It's a lot better than the stuff you buy in the tackle shops. A lot of that comes from short fin squid. From what I found, it, the long fin squid is much tougher and it stays on the hook much better. I'm just gonna slice this up into little bits. And today I'm just using little bits of squid. You could certainly use worms, you could use clams. Um, they'll certainly eat just about anything, but they're bottom feeders. You're gonna find them not very far off the surface. They're mainly feeding on small crabs, crustaceans. And from what I found, they really like these kind of back bays and estuaries. Right now we're on the south side of Cape Cod in a salt pond. We're fishing right up by the entrance to it. And I think these fish are coming in here. They're spawning in late summer. Oh, there's another one. So I think right now they're just coming off the spawn. It seems like kind of mid-September, early September is the peak time to find these things. And we just got here, we picked up two fish right off the bat. This guy's a little bit on the smaller side. So for good karma, I'm gonna let that guy go. Oh, I think we got another customer. One of the fun things about fishing this time of year is you never really know what you're gonna get. Um, Oop, there's a fish. If you're gonna catch something weird, this is the time of year you're gonna get it. That's a decent kingfish. What I like about these kingfish is their fillets are like the perfect size for a fish taco. So that's what we're gonna be making later on today. From what I found, they really like sandy areas and they don't go that deep. You know, you're generally gonna find them in, let's say, four to six feet of water. 
sandy sandy bottom is ideal. Um, you can catch them on all the, the beach fronts where they like to kind of hang right in the first lip of the drop off. And they also seem to like these sandy back bays and estuaries. So Osprey, he's probably looking for the same thing I'm looking for. Oh, I think I got another customer. Another kingfish. The kingfish bite is on fire. Now there's no size limit, there's no bag limit on these things, at least in Massachusetts anyway, where we're fishing. So essentially each one of these is gonna provide two fish tacos, each filet is gonna make a taco. So I'm just looking to keep four or five of these. I don't wanna get greedy. I wanna see these things keep coming back and continuing to be prolific. So I've caught in four fish already on this one little piece of bait. And anytime you're chunking bait, good rule of thumb is keep your bait fresh. We got plenty of squid here. After that squid sits out there for four or five minutes, it loses a lot of its scent. We just wanna keep freshening up our bait. fish seem to be concentrated right now anyway on a little drop off from pretty expansive sandy flat that drops into a little bit of a deeper channel and I'm picking up all these fish right in the edge of that channel and for me this is about as relaxing as fishing gets I love fishing bait it's kind of become a lost art um, everybody now is so caught up in throwing plugs and fishing you know, fly fishing and making things complicated, but it's really about as simple as it gets. And it's kind of like going back to your roots. As far as our rig goes, this is about as basic as it gets. I just have a leader here, which I tied a dropper loop to. Got one of those pre-snelled small hooks you buy in the package. A little three quarters ounce weight, which is more than enough to hold bottom. Just gonna toss that out in the edge of that flat. And just sort of wiggle our rod tip, give that squid a little movement. Ooh, doggy. So we're all pretty much been cookie cutter in size. But that is indeed a mature fish. This is actually a pretty cool looking little fish. They're a member of the drum family. They're related to black drum, red drum. It's really the only drum species that we have this far north. It's down in like Florida, Georgia. They refer to these as sea mullet, which I think is a crazy name because they look nothing like a real mullet. I'm talking about the fish, not the haircut. In the mid-Atlantic, these things are called whiting, which is another kind of misleading name because we have whiting here in Cape Cod Bay that are in the cod family. The technical name is northern kingfish. There is also a southern kingfish that looks very similar, although it's really rare to find one of those this far north. So this guy is gonna join the other varsity players in the bucket. The other thing I like to do with pretty much any fish I keep is to bleed them out. It gives you a much cleaner fillet. It's also the ethical thing to do is to dispatch your prey as quickly as possible. All right, we got a nice haul of northern kingfish this morning. Now it's time to cook them up.
Today I'm gonna to be pan frying the fish, which is my preferred method for any kind of delicate um, white fleshed fish, such as the Northern Kingfish we have. Their meat is kind of similar to like a black sea bass. Um, so when you, you pan fry them, you get a nice crispy coating, gives the taco a nice crunch. So first step is we need to fillet our catch. I'm just gonna start by angling the up towards the head. That's where most of the meat is up towards the front. Get the cut started and just work down to the backbone. All right, we have our miniature fillets here. I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse under cold water, get any scales and fish slime off of them. Just a quick rinse. Dry that off in paper towels, and that is ready to fry. Now I'm gonna just dust these fillets with a little salt and pepper. And salting the fish before you bread it will help make the breading stick to it. So as this rests, the salt is going to draw moisture out of the fish and that's going to turn into a little glue that's going to help hold our breading on there. All right, now we're going to set up the holy trinity of fried fish. We're going to start with some flour. We can use pie plates for this, they're the perfect shape. This one is going to get breadcrumbs and panko breadcrumbs. Panko is going to make these nice and crunchy. Last but not least, two eggs. Thank you, ladies. So first we go flour, coat it on both sides, then into the egg, and into the crumbs. Press those crumbs in, make sure it's well coated. And that is ready to fry. That nine more times. All right, next step is an important one. I'm gonna pop these in the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes. And what that's gonna do, it's really gonna make the breadcrumbs stick to the fish. When we fry it, it's gonna hold up much better. While the fish is chilling, we're gonna whip up some mean tortillas. Um, making the tortillas yourself really kind of elevates your fish tacos. Kind of brings them to a whole nother level. So we're gonna start with one cup of flour. We're gonna do one cup of corn flour. It's also sometimes referred to as masa. It's basically just ground up cornmeal. And traditional tortillas just use the corn flour. I like a blend of 50-50 corn flour and regular flour. I like my carbs. I do one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna whisk together our dry ingredients. Make sure that's well blended, get that baking powder mixed throughout there. And to this, we're gonna add one cup of warm water. You can see it's real simple, very basic recipe. And I never seem to get the water to flour mixture quite right on the first try. You usually either have to add more water, or a little more flour. You really just wanna get it to a consistency where it'll hold together. Or we can form it into balls. I usually do a test one just to make sure it's gonna to hold together when we press it. And that's about the consistency we, that we want. 
So you could really get away with rolling these out with a rolling pin. I am a sucker for kitchen gadgets, so I have a tortilla press. Um, you can buy these for about 25 bucks. They're not very expensive. They do make the job a lot easier. And if you put the dough right in that pan, it's gonna stick. So a good tip is to cut a gallon Ziploc bag. You could also use saran wrap, but I think this is the easiest way to go. We're gonna place that in our press. And we're gonna to wanna to make a ball that's a little bit bigger than a golf ball. And they're always gonna vary in size when you're done, but that's kind of the intrigue of making them homemade. And go easy with the pressure at first. You can always add more pressure, but you can't take it away. And it looks about perfect. So here's our four, first tortilla. Here we have a cast iron skillet. I preheated this for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna get that nice and hot. And these are gonna go really quick. Quick spray of cooking oil. Carefully take the tortilla out of the plastic. And we'll give that side a quick spray. And it's only gonna take about 30 seconds per side. Well, that one's cooking. We're gonna get started on our next one. And after 30 seconds, give it a flip. Another 30 seconds, we have a tortilla. And there you have it, one tortilla. We're gonna put this on a plate with a towel. I'm gonna keep these nice and warm. There's a chicken in here, get the chicken out. Albie, chicken out. Good girl. All right, so we get our tortillas done. Now it's time to fry up the fish. I'm gonna use an electric frying pan for, for this. This is the perfect tool. It has a thermometer, so it's gonna hold the heat exactly at 350 degrees. I just need to get about a quarter inch of oil. I'm using canola, but you can certainly use vegetable oil. You can use peanut oil. That should do it. I'm gonna plug this bad boy in and preheat it to 350 degrees. That's really the beauty of an electric frying pan is it holds the temperature well. When you put the fish in, the oil temperature is gonna drop, but it's gonna automatically adjust it to bring the temperature back up. We're gonna get a drying rack, metal drying rack set up. You never wanna put your cooked fish on paper towels. After it's been fried, it makes it soggy. And while that oil is heating up, we'll get all the sides together for our tacos. One of the great things about fish tacos is you can really put whatever you want on it. I like to go all in on the toppings. I like to make Taco Supreme. So I get a mix of various toppings here, aside with our homemade tortillas. We have some homemade salsa that's very spicy. We have a black bean and corn salad that just has a little cilantro and lime juice mixed in. We have cojito cheese, which is a Mexican cheese. Very crumbly, a little bit salty, good stuff. These are simply really thinly sliced red onion. They're putting vinegar, a little sugar and salt in there. I have some shredded cabbage and carrot. We have a sour cream sauce that has a little bit of cilantro blended into it. We've got a little last of last year's homemade hot sauce. A squirt of lime juice is gonna really put these over the top. We need eaters, where's the eaters? She brought the beer, I'm here to eat, man. No biting. Our eaters have arrived. All right, these fillets are pretty thin. These are gonna cook up really quick. You know, probably two minutes per side is all they're gonna need.
I'm just gonna give these guys a little light dusting of kosher salt. All right, gentlemen, they're ready to pig out. Self serve. Feel like a lunch lady. The kingfish are like the perfect size for it. Yeah. It's like they were made to make tacos. Yeah, if there's one step that you're gonna take to make a better fish taco, make your own tortillas. 